Last module, we heard about the cooperative principle and this idea that people work together and cooperate to have a conversation. Um, so now let's look a little bit more specifically at what that means. So actually, um, when Grice proposed the cooperative principle, he also broke it down into smaller pieces and explained like all of the all of the different ways that we cooperate. There's a there's a, a long long list of them, but usually when when people in pragmatics discuss it nowadays, we usually lump them together into these four. Um, so these are the kind of uh, principles that we assume people are observing when they have a conversation. Um, number one, what's called the principle of quality. We don't say things that we don't know are true. Um, of course, in reality, you know, people don't always do that. Sometimes people lie. But the assumption we have during a conversation is normally that people are not lying, right? Normally we assume they are following this. Um, the next one is quantity. So people say as much as needed for the purpose of conversation. They don't say a lot of extra stuff and they don't leave out stuff. Um, the third one is relation. So we assume that people say things that are related to the conversation. And the last one is manner. We assume people say things in a, a clear and brief and unambiguous way instead of being very weird and wordy. Um, so of course, in reality, people don't always talk like this all the time, right? You can probably imagine a lot of cases where uh, people do say things in a convoluted way, or people say, people leave something out instead of saying everything they should say, um, or any of these other uh, principles can be violated, right? Any of these maxims can be violated. But the idea of the cooperative principle is that we normally assume people are cooperating unless we have reason to believe otherwise. And so if we see someone appear to break one of these maxims, then we will try to find a way to reinterpret what they're saying to make it fit. Um, this is especially happens if people break the maxim in a really obvious way that makes it clear that they are intentionally breaking the maxim in order to convey some kind of message. So for example, let's think about the maxim of quality first. Imagine that um, you told me something very good happened to you. I, you, you, um, you won a million dollars in a game show or something. Uh, I might say, yeah, and I'm the queen of England. Right? This is obviously false. And it, it's obvious that I know it's false. I'm, there's there's probably no reason to believe that I'm so crazy that I think I'm the queen of England. So it looks like I'm obviously violating the maxim of quality, right? I'm obviously saying something that I know is false. So you could assume that I'm not a cooperative speaker. I'm just a big liar or I'm, I'm crazy. Um, you could assume that for some reason, I do believe I'm the queen of England. Or the most likely thing is you'll assume that I, I don't actually mean literally that I'm the queen of England, but I mean to express some other message, right? And in this case, the message is probably, I think what you just told me is super implausible and not likely. So I'm, I'm going to also say something implausible to show like that I don't believe you, right? So this is an example of how we can violate a maxim um, in order to express some kind of, some new message to a person. Um, and so, like I said, any of these maxims can be violated. And when we're having a conversation, people will normally assume that we are observing the maxim. So if we say something that looks like it violates the maxim, they will interpret it in another way. 